you have to follow your heart if pure science is what you enjoy doing do it i wouldn't worry about how many jobs there are and how many for people who are good at what they do there are plenty of jobs if you're talking to students sort of like yourself like your age if you find biology interesting just read widely dr chetan chitnis is an indian scientist who specializes in biotechnology and infectious diseases his research centers around vaccine development for malaria and he has received the shanti swarup patnagar and Infosys Prize for his work in the same. In today's interview, Dr. Chitnas will speak about how a young student interested in science can find their path through biotechnology and the multitude of career opportunities it presents. Before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe so you can keep seeing content like this. Let's get into it. So first off, could you tell us a little bit more about your specialization in biotech? I wouldn't say I specialize in biotech. I mean, what I work on is infectious diseases. Within infectious diseases, I have been working now for more than 20 years on malaria. So what we do is try and understand, as you know, malaria is still a major problem in the world, especially in the tropical world and in developing countries. And it still kills about half a million children every year, primarily in Africa, but also in India, Southeast Asia, etc. You know, and this happens year after year. So it's a major problem. Now, so what we study is how the malaria, the basic biology of the malaria parasite. So we try and study how the malaria parasite invades red blood cells. Uh, okay. What are the interactions between the molecular, at the molecular level, what are the interactions between the parasite and the red blood cells that are required for invasion? So that's how we try and use that information to try and develop vaccines for malaria. So that's what we do. What makes it such a difficult illness to manage? I mean, the news came out recently that we finally gotten a vaccine for malaria. Why did it take so long? Till the recent announcement, we haven't been able to make a vaccine for any parasitic disease. So we have been able to make vaccines for viruses, for bacteria, but parasites are much more complex. You know, we have been successful at making vaccines against infectious diseases against which you naturally develop immunity fairly quickly. So all you do is you find a way to grow the virus, you kill it or you attenuate it, weaken it and use that as your vaccine. So that's the classical way of making vaccines. So even what for COVID vaccine, the way some vaccines have been made, like the vaccine available in India made by Bharat Biotech. They grow the virus, kill it, and use that as a vaccine. And it works reasonably. But for malaria, even after you're infected, you don't get very good immunity. In an area where there's lots of malaria, children have to be infected multiple times over many years, and then they get some kind of immunity because the parasite is complex. It has thousands of genes. So which one will you target? That's why it's a much more complex problem. Hmm. Okay. You mentioned how it's much easier to create vaccines and therapeutics for viral and bacterial diseases. How would your experience with malaria have helped you understand COVID better? Well, some of the basic principles of how you make a vaccine are similar across different infectious diseases. So it's a back and forth between uh, different fields and different diseases. When I was reading about you and how you and your career path, if I'm not mistaken, you originally did your science degree in physics. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. How did you end up specializing in malaria of, you know, coming from a physics background? It's it seems like a very strange combination to me because we don't normally hear people talk about life sciences and physics going hand in hand. Well, actually, there are a number of physicists who have ended up working in life sciences, uh, in uh, many, uh, so that's not so uncommon. Uh, but in my own case, I mean, I, when I was in school, like I was interested in science, both physics and biology were interesting to me. And in those days, if you went to university, uh, you had to do either zoology or botany. And the way that was taught was unfortunately not very interesting. So I said, okay, let me study physics. And I was fortunate that I got into IIT Bombay to study physics. And there was a young professor who had come back from Harvard to the Department of Chemistry and had started biochemistry at IIT. So I started doing courses with him in biochem. And that's when I decided, no, this is something I really want to do. 
then when i went to the us in the us they are much more flexible you know they allow people to change fields so there i found uh, the department of biophysics at the university of california at berkeley where they took students from different backgrounds and allowed them to switch and uh, that got me interested in trying to understand the molecular basis of how pathogens cause disease and then i decided for my further research as a postdoctoral during postdoctoral research i said let me pick a disease that is relevant to india that to tropical countries we had finally decided on a lab that works on malaria just because i found the problem they were working on interesting and then that work actually went very well i worked at the national institutes of health on malaria that's where i first started working on malaria and then i moved back to india and worked for about 18 years we established a lab in delhi uh, at the international center for genetic engineering and biotechnology and that's where we developed some of the first vaccines uh, uh, that are being tested currently and so that's that was my path so in science you know you have to follow what you find interesting and then you know and it's combination of what you're interested in and what opportunities appear and that defines your path <laughs> well i find it really fascinating because you mentioned like um, in the beginning the courses you were offered were botany and zoology those tend to be the fields we normally think of when we say biology but more yeah. and more we are seeing these kind of cross disciplinary subjects like you said biophysics yeah. i do feel like we're moving from the realm of pure sciences to more interdisciplinary sciences what do you have to say about that do you, do you think that's true yeah yeah that's of course absolutely true in all kinds of fields there is uh, you know for example even uh, uh, informatics computer science and biology there's a whole field of bioinformatics all the genome information combined with all the information on diseases etc you know you could be sitting on a computer screen and doing your research related to understanding infectious diseases for example so there is a lot of interdisciplinarity but what i would say is that comes a little later in your career at the beginning it's important to have a good grounding in one of the fields physics chemistry biology but biochemistry microbiology molecular biology these are also all now taught at the undergraduate level because what you learn there is uh, you know how to think about problems but at the same time i'd encourage young students to explore different subjects in their undergraduate education well could you tell us a little bit more about some other directions we could take an education in biotechnology in like you've chosen to specialize in infectious diseases malaria specifically but what are the other branches you could you know go down if say biotechnology is what you're interested in well i mean one could make a list but i don't think that is so important i think at if if you're talking to students sort of like yourself like your age if you find biology interesting life science is interesting just read widely there are uh, and then see what your interests are do you really like the pure science end of things you know you don't have to select the field you just have to read and follow whatever opportunities you get and you know i mean when i started i had no idea i'd be working on something like malaria for the next 20 30 years the sort of journey has continued well i find what you said very very interesting because so many people i've spoken to have all said that if you want to take pure sciences you need to be ready for the fact that there's not going to be as much potential or there won't be as many jobs what do you have to say about that Oh, no, I mean, you have to follow your heart. You know, I mean, if pure sciences is what you enjoy doing, do it. I wouldn't worry about uh, how many jobs there are and how many, uh, you know, there's plenty of jobs. But if you are good at it, if you, that's what I said, you know, if you find something you enjoy doing, if you enjoy doing it, you'll do it well and then everything else will follow. You know, but there's no point, you know, spending rest of your life doing something that's not interesting to you. You know, that you don't wake up every morning and wanting to go to work because then it's no longer feels like work. You know, it's it's something you enjoy. So I wouldn't worry about. I mean, there's there's for people who are good at what they do, there are plenty of jobs. That's really really great advice. Um, it's something that I feel a lot of people really need to hear because one of the things that we that students these days look into one of the most important things we look into these days is career prospects in the future, possible salary. I think 
it's really unfortunate that so many of us forget that what we're doing is for ourselves and just speaking to you about that gives me a lot of confidence that you know there are fields like this that we do just for enjoyment and they are feasible career options for the future yeah i mean having said that i would say you know pure science and being a scientist is not a easy career path so you have to be sure that you know you feel passionately about science and you really enjoy doing it and if you do then you know go ahead and and do it everything else will fall in place okay well if i am a student who wants to go down this path who wants to do research in biochemistry or biophysics sequentially what would you say my my path should look like what would you have me do well i mean first of all try to get into the best universities you can under your circumstances first of all always read widely and the second thing is even in your undergraduate years find work opportunities see if you really enjoy working in a lab going down the career path of science become a practicing researcher scientist is not the only path in your undergrad years already start exploring whether you really enjoy so that when you then finish your undergrad and have to make a decision whether you want to go for a phd or not or even after a phd you can go for work for companies so there are many many different options that open up so i wouldn't worry so much at this level as i said find things you enjoy doing and keep your mind open read a lot talk to people get yourself experience work experience and uh, keep making your decisions uh, as things go on this is scientists where we meet experts and ask questions that can help you make the right study and career decisions in the sciences i do this as a fellow student so your support through a like and subscription will give me and everyone contributing to this channel a lot of encouragement